You know, it depresses me that there aren't a lot of people talking about this show. While everyone is busy gushing about the new Castlevania series, and they should, by the way, because it's amazing, I'm over here scratching my head on why no one is talking about this. Well, that changes right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. We're talking about the excellent Netflix show, Blue Eye Samurai. The man I met is no man. A demon. Nothing can stop him. Blue Eye Samurai is a new animated show about a young woman samurai on a quest for revenge on a group of men that made her an outcast in Japan. Oh man, where do we even begin? First off, this show is gorgeous. The animation style here is so good and it pairs well with the cinematography. There are so many breathtaking moments in the show that it's hard to keep count. There's one fight sequence in episode two that takes place on a cliffside and it is incredible. And don't let the fact that this is an animated show stop you from watching this because it's worth it. I wouldn't even call myself a huge animation guy and I was hooked from episode one and I remain hooked for the remaining seven episodes. One of the reasons the show was so good is its characters. Now, the plot isn't treading any new ground here, but it's carried by the fact that the characters are so good. Mizu is a fantastic protagonist. You learn more about her as the show goes on and the more you know, the more tragic she becomes. She's a strong but vulnerable hero, which is refreshing. Yes, she kicks ass, but she also gets her ass kicked, and she has weaknesses, one of which is trust. And that weakness is tested by her forced sidekick, Ringo. And Ringo, Ringo is just the best. Ringo is such a joy every time he's on screen. And like Mizu, he's also interesting. What could have been just another normal average sidekick role, he's actually pretty layered. Ringo has dreams aspirations, goals. He's aspiring for something and it's a blast to watch him grow. Misu's journey is both an exciting one and a tragic one, and I was along for the ride in each episode. It was always exciting to see what Misu and Ringo would come up against next as each episode went along. It's an adventure worth taking. And heck, Misu and Ringo aren't even the only interesting characters. I'd argue that they all are. There's this sort of third companion in Mizu's entourage that is only there to help Mizu on her quest just so he can duel her when she's done. Then there's Mizu's blind blade master mentor. There's the princess who's trying to carve her own path in society. Everyone in the show has something to do and has their own quests, and the show benefits from that. So now let's talk about the action. The action in the show is divine. The choreography and how it's shot feels so refreshing. It's nice to be able to see every swing of the blade and every body movement. In animation, it can be hard to tell what's happening from time to time, but not here in Blue Eye Samurai. The action here is smooth and fluid. Some of the set pieces in the show are like edge of your seat type set pieces. I already mentioned the one on the cliffside in episode two, but there are many, many, many more. Hell, even the set piece that takes place at the end of episode one is thrilling and nail biting. And the action works because you care. The action here isn't just action that is meant to be cool for cool sake, like a lot of action films and shows these days. What makes the action work is that you care about the characters. An action scene where you don't care about anyone on screen is almost always dull to me. I need to care about what's happening. And luckily, Blue Eye Samurai delivers here. I should also say at this point that this show is very mature. It's incredibly bloody and violent. Add to that, there's a lot of sex and nudity. So I guess if you're really into sex and violence, then this is the show for you. Luckily to me, it never felt gratuitous, but I just wanted to speak on it because I'm sure the over the top violence and sex could turn some people off. So I've been gushing about the show so far, but do I have any negative critiques for the show? And I do actually, but it's just one. Somewhere around episode six, I think, there is a short episode where Mizu has to scale a tower because the big bad villain is at the top. And with each floor Mizu climbs, more and more obstacles prevent her from getting to the top. Now, from a plot point of view, there's nothing really wrong here. What I didn't like is the tone this episode took. And that's because, at random, this episode decided to use about three to four needle drops. And these ranged from Metallica to 50s pop rock to just pop. Now, it's not that I don't like needle drops. I'm the first to admit I'm a sucker for good music track. However, the previous five episodes didn't use any music. The previous five episodes relied on the beautiful score or just straight up using silence. Then all of a sudden in episode six, it's just balls to the walls, music, music, music. And it mostly plays over action, which kind of gives it a feel of like, 
Hey, audience, look how cool this action is while Metallica is playing. Isn't this so freaking dope, bros? If they didn't need to rely on music in the first five episodes, why did they decide to do it here? It leaves me a little puzzled. Now, if they would have used a bunch of needle drops in the first five episodes, I wouldn't have complained about this episode because that was the tone they created. But they didn't use music, so this episode, tonally speaking, felt very out of place. All right, folks, I'm going to wrap things up here. I just want to say that you really need to watch the show. I highly, highly recommend it. And there is so, so much I'm leaving out here, but I kind of think that's for the best because I want you to have the same experience I had watching it fresh. So go watch it, and I hope you enjoy it. It's straight up one of the best animated shows on Netflix. That's it, folks. If you like the sound of my voice, please hit the like button and subscribe. And until the next time, I say cheers.